there are a lot of people that struggle with emotional eating and I just wanted to put some things out there and hopefully something that I may say may help you in some way. Um, I was listening to something this morning and um, TED Talk actually and they were talking about the Newton laws, the laws of motion. And uh, the first law of motion essentially says that every object in a state of uniform motion tends to remain in the state of motion unless an external force is applied. Meaning something comes in and takes it off track, is pushed, is agitated. Um, it just goes reeling. And the third law of motion says that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So when this object is pushed, essentially by a force, it's going to not just stop immediately, but it's going to push something else, bounce back, is going to create even greater chaos. Let me say this. Food is fuel. It's not your friend. If you do not remember anything else that I may say today, just remember that. Food is fuel. It's not your friend. Now, as many things that we may encounter on a daily basis, and we get hit with so much sometimes, the suddenlies, all the stressors. If you are the kind of person who runs to emotional eating, that is your go-to, that is what you default to, um, you're going to be constantly fighting the weight gain, constantly fighting skin problems and health issues. Um, not only that, but the emotional issues that come from losing control over your eating, which are depression and guilt and shame and poor self-esteem. So my, my advice is when something happens, you get hit. Instead of running to the emotional eating to whatever pattern you're used to, try to stay in some sort of a routine. If you exercise, continue to exercise. If you eat well, continue to eat well. Try to keep as much control in the areas that you can so that you do not feel so overwhelmed when everything else is going kind of crazy. If you can keep control and a handle on your eating and exercise, it's going to help you have some sort of peace over some things. Otherwise, when the crisis is over, and you find yourself on the other side of it and you return to some sort of normalcy. You don't have to deal with damage control of your weight, of the extra pounds, of the lack of energy, of the low self-esteem, of feeling um, just guilt and all the things that, that come with just completely letting go. Food is fuel, it's not your friend. So that intimacy that sometimes we form with food, that bond, that has to be broken, that has to be interrupted. <clears throat> Everything around us was created with some sort of a positive purpose. And when we abuse that purpose, the thing is going to backfire. So when you abuse the purpose of food, which is to fuel you, is going to backfire you're going to have the effects of your body not feeling good, not looking good, not operating and functioning the way that it is supposed to. In this country, we tend to avoid anything that makes us feel bad or sad. And even with young kids, when a child cries, often the first thing that somebody does is want to offer food or a cookie to try and interrupt that upset cycle. Don't do that. We teach the concept of comfort food to our children from the time that they are very young. So they grow with the mindset of, I am feeling bad, but I know the thing that is gonna make me feel better. Whether consciously or subconsciously, that is what they do. Take that child, go for a walk, talk to them in a soothing voice, 
engage in some sort of an activity that is positive, that will take their minds off of whatever issue upset them in the first place. And do the same for yourself. Go for a walk, go for a hike, cry it out. Um, get yourself out of whatever environment you're in. Don't go for food. Think about a plan. Think about something that you can do dealing that is going to bring some sort of a solution to the problem. When I get upset, I don't use that as, a, as an excuse to indulge in all the wrong stuff or even overeat even the healthy stuff. I have a playlist that I use for my own personal workout time, like when I go to the gym. And in that playlist, I have music from the 70s, from the 80s, current music. They're all things that make me happy. Uh, to a lot of those songs, there's a lot of memories attached to them. So it's kind of nostalgic in a way. So when I get upset and I need to offload because I have been hit by an external force, um, I put on my playlist, I crank the volume up, I'm usually home, and for the next hour or two, I dance. Not nice dance, wild dance, crazy dance. And most of the time, I'll cry for the whole time, during the whole thing. And I will get to the point where I am completely drained, totally exhausted, but I feel better. My mind can think clearly and I can then begin to come up with some sort of a plan, even if it's just short term. So if you come by my house and there's very loud music going on, I am probably having a moment. Um, you need to come up with some sort of an emotional contingency plan for the next time that something hits. Don't wait until it happens. Because if you wait, you're gonna find yourself under it. And if you go to is food, that is the thing that you're gonna go for. Don't wait until it happens. Think about it. Next time that I get hit with something major and I'm completely stressed out and upset, I am going to do this. I am going to go for a walk. I am going to go for a jog. I am going to put music on and dance like a crazy person. But do something that is positive. And uh, whatever you do, do not fall into self-pity because we tend to do that as well. Look for a solution. If there's something that is stressing you out that is supposed to happen next Thursday, can you do anything about it today? If not, don't go there. Stay in the moment. Stay on Saturday. So food is fuel. It is not your friend. That cycle of running to food, every time you get stressed out, you need to stop it. You need to interrupt it. Because eventually it's just going to end up in completely um, destroying all the good and sabotaging all the good that you've been doing. And it will end up eventually in obesity. So I hope this helped you. If you have any comments, subscribe, like, and uh, I will see you next time. Bye-bye.